In the desert reveal video the other day, we were teased with this giant statue whom Steven referred to as the Desert Mama. Without revealing who she was significantly, he did go on to mention that the symbol on her crown is very significant. So today, we are diving into a bit of speculation here, and for those of you who want to know more about the lore and the origins of Vera and who this lady is, well, you'll probably learn a thing or two. But before we get too far into this, we are getting very close to 20% viewer subscribed. So if you are not subscribed and keep coming back for more Ashes content, click that button and let's raise this 17.5% to 20%. Woo! Anyways, back into the mystery. Like any great research project, you gotta head to the biggest wealth of information on any given subject. And in this case, that is the Ashes of Creation Wiki, where I put in way too much time into something that's probably gonna be given away in a quest line in Alpha 2, but I didn't want to wait. So since this is the desert teaser video, I figured why not start in the desert, and more specifically with the Veiloon humans. This race has made their home in the desert, so it would make sense that they are related to this giant statue somehow. And sure enough, when you look at the Veiloon sigils, this symbol hidden within the sigil shown here looks very familiar. So surely this statue has to do with the Veiloon, right? You may be thinking, this doesn't look exactly like that symbol, so you're wrong. Well, hold on a minute, because from here, I looked at some other race symbols just as my curiosity hit me. And if you look at the Pyraeles, another pretty similar symbol is shown in this sigil. And again here with the Dunir Dwarves, and the Empyrean Elves in this sword hilt, and even in the main sigil shown here, you can see a similar design. You can even see variations of this symbol in the Kalar Human Sword. The only ones really seeming to be missing out here out of the four main races of Vera are the orcs. Unless this symbol for the Vec count, which seems to have a very similar feel to it, but still distinct enough for me to question. But for the moment, we are counting it due to the fact that it seems that almost every race has a symbol represented in some fashion in their own style. So what do humans, elves, dwarves, and orcs all have in common? Well, to answer this, we have to go way back to the beginning of time. In the beginning, there was what was known as the Pantheon of the Gods. Ten gods who imbued all of their qualities into one race, whom they gave stewardship over all of creation to. This race was known as the Ancients. But with time, the power of the Ancients and a rift between the ten gods grew, eventually causing three of the gods to go their separate ways and teach the Ancients in secret about the Essence, an energy that can be manipulated to create what we view as magic, basically as of creation's version of the force eventually this led to a great celestial battle and the ancients were imprisoned and so on and the remaining seven gods realized the error of their ways by making this one race with all of their qualities and split their qualities into four races instead of one thus creating the humans elves orcs and dwarves which i believe this is what the symbol on the crown represents the order of the seven the symbol even has seven points which could be used to represent these seven gods. And you see this guy here in the Pantheon image tease that Steven leaked a long time ago? This armor looks really familiar, doesn't it? And it has that same symbol, meaning this guy is probably a protector of the seven. But that still leaves the question of who this desert lady is. Well, I've got one big theory on this, as we do in fact know what five out of these seven gods represent. We have the goddess of creation, which is represented by the phoenix, the goddess of fate known as Norlin, which seems to be the one that is represented by the Kavek orcs, the god of hope, whom is Resna, which seem to be represented by the Aelin humans, the god of truth, Shoal, which is represented by the Puran Elves, and then we have the Goddess of Love, whom we don't know anything about, not even her name. 
Obviously, this statue, though, is not Resna, as Resna is a god and not a goddess, and this statue Stephen refers to as a mother, which makes me think that this is in fact the goddess of love. The name Mother, or the Desert Mama as Stephen calls her, isn't just a random name. He referred to her as this for a reason with some connection in the back of his head, and in some religions, the mother is meant to represent love, responsibility, and fertility. Not only that, but the statue is holding her hands out like she is giving something to the inhabitants of the desert, showing her love for her people. The only thing that throws me off here though is if the Ayla humans hold the Order of Hope representing Resna, why would they build a giant statue of the Goddess of Love in the middle of the desert instead, which is human territory? I mean, it is possible that not all humans are faithful to the same gods and goddesses, as there are seven gods and only four major races created by the gods, so it could be that, or maybe we assume this statue was created by humans, but in fact was created by something else. I guess we'll have to wait until Alpha 2 to hopefully find out the truth about this mystery, but until then, let me know in the comments your thoughts on my detective work here, and if you're new to Ashes and have yet to create an account, feel free to use my referral link in the description below where you can make an account, jump in on the forums, and get ready to play. Otherwise, be sure to click that subscribe button, hit that thumbs up, turn on the bell for notifications, and stay tuned for a lot more to come.